My name is Kevin. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am the other half of the design equation here at Magic Bell. Uh, I am our product designer, and I work primarily on our web app, the dashboard. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm here to talk to you about today. Uh, now, for those of you who may not know, and it's a possibility, we have a new dashboard. It's been out in the wild for just over a month. Um, and I think you might be asking yourself, why? Why create a new dashboard now? Uh, what was the point of going into this at this point in time? So let me talk you through it. Now, the first point uh, was what Mila just mentioned. Uh, we have a new visual identity and the old dashboard, it just didn't quite fit. Uh, and it was important for us to create a really, really consistent experience across the whole Magic Bell platform. Uh, so some changes were going to need to be made regardless. But importantly, we saw a massive opportunity in this rebrand. Now, we're already looking at some pretty significant changes to the old dashboard. Uh, so as we've matured, we've gotten much better at understanding our users and the types of problems that the dashboard can solve. Now, I'm going to cover this more in the demo, but in a nutshell, we wanted to evolve the dashboard to better balance the experience. So whether or not you are a developer or you're in customer support or you're in product management, uh, we wanted to give you the best possible experience. And just going with a rebuild gave us the chance to wipe the slate clean and create something that was purpose built to be super, super flexible. Now, the third reason, very important, is that the old dashboard simply was slowing us down. Uh, now, the old dashboard, it was built in the early stages of Magic Bell. Uh, it's done really well for us, uh, but it did have a lot of one-off code, uh, and it didn't really have a consistent design system that was guiding the whole experience. Uh, so it did make it very hard to produce high-quality, fast iterations. So now that we are maturing as a product and as an org, uh, it was time to rebuild. And we started with a really, really solid foundation. Uh, I don't know if there's any front-end developers on the call here, but uh, we did start with our building blocks, as Mila had mentioned, our, our new design system. Uh, we did come up with an entirely new design system that works across both marketing and the product. Uh, and we built our own component library on top of Radix, if you're familiar with Radix. But probably the most important and exciting part of this is that it is open source. So even though our design system is still in its infancy, uh, we are super excited to have the chance to actually build it out with our community, kind of in keeping with how we've done things here in the past. Now, I could talk your ears off about uh, design systems and components, but I think it's probably better for me to just jump into a demo. And we will hope that the demo gods are nice to me today. Here we go. So <laughs> we are... In my project here, uh, for any uh, Seinfeld fans, this is my company, Vandalay Industries. All of my demo projects are Vandalay. That never changes. Uh, now, before I actually go into a scenario, I am going to walk you through a workflow end to end, but I want to stop for one second and talk about performance. Now, this is a, a fairly chunky project here. It's been around for a while. Uh, in the old dashboard, loading up my notification list would take about two to three seconds. So let's give this a shot here. I'll pop over to notifications and one, two, three, boom. That's no cheating, no cheating, nothing pre cached preloaded. Uh, let's try users. Bam. Hardest one, logs, the mother, there it is. So this is a true story about three weeks ago. Uh, I was working on that new design system and I was creating our loading component. I was super excited about it. It's very slick. Uh, and meanwhile, though, Hanna and Stefan on the engineering side were tackling loading from a different angle, and they just decided to make everything load basically instantaneously. So it made my work completely obsolete, uh, and I did not finish that component. Uh, if I do, you'll probably never see it. So there you go. Long story short, the greatest improvement to the experience uh, had nothing to do with the product designer. <laughs> I credit all our, our engineers for that. Now, for uh, my end to end scenario here, I want to walk through uh, this case. This is still very early on, we'll say, in my project. I'm still setting up my categories. Uh, I'm still testing up my notifications. So I want to set up a new category, uh, set up a, a delivery sequence for that category, and then I want to test out a notification. So I'm going to pop into settings here for a second and go into categories. I'm going to pause here for just a second, not because categories is the most beautiful screen in the application, but it does illustrate our design philosophy fairly nicely. Uh, if you recall the old dashboard, 
I'll jump in for two seconds. But if you're in the categories here, you can click through these suckers one by one. It's wonderfully simple. Uh, we love the UI, but sometimes you just want to see the data in front of you. So that's what we did with the, the new dashboard. Anytime that we had a chance to be more efficient in displaying our data, we took it. So in categories, for example, instead of one by one, we have a nice list. It shows you all of the enabled channels for a particular category, whether or not it's in the user preferences panel, what that label is. And again, you can very quickly see uh, some of the data that is, is most critical. So I'm gonna jump in and create a new category called reply. Oh my goodness. Now this application is very collaboration heavy, we'll say. Lots of people working on documents together. Uh, and the next thing I wanna do is I wanna set up my delivery settings. So smart delivery is very similar in the new application to the old web app. Uh, it's the same functionality, but we were just presenting it in a different way, making it a little easier to understand the flow of a delivery. Uh, visually. Now, one of our, our benefits at Magic Bell has always been we want uh, to avoid sending unnecessary notifications and, you know, overburden users with notifications. So I've got in-app, web push, and email all set to deliver always right away. And I'm going to pop in a quick delay right here. I'm going to say 10 minutes. So now I want it to deliver to in-app, the least intrusive, the, uh, the channel that we really stand by, and then give a chance to users to see it. And if not, as a fallback, we're going to send it off to web push and email. There we are. Pop back in. There we go. We've got my new channel. We've got my delivery sequence. Time to test out a notification. This is where I get nervous. I'm a designer messing around with the API. Let's give it a go. I'm in Postman. Uh, and I'm going to create a new notification, new reply on sales team onboarding. Uh, it's a document collaboration scenario. And I've got two rules here. One is a matches rule. So I want to target everybody who's on the sales team. And then otherwise, I have one direct email address. And I have an override here for the email title. So a fairly standard notification, nothing fancy. Let's go ahead and send that off. There we go. And I'm going to head back into Magic Bell and let's take a look at that notification. Here we are. So I've got my new category, new reply on sales team onboarding. And when I get into the notification details, this is where you can really start to see what I was talking about earlier in terms of balancing the experience between our different users, whether or not you are in product management or customer support uh, or developer. Uh, in the old experience, the notification details, we were really kind of focused on maybe the, the, the less technical use cases. Uh, and we still are, but at the same time, if you're debugging a notification or you're testing it out, it's important that as a developer, you're able to see the payload. So those recipient rules and our overrides are really, really important to understanding whether or not your notification is working as you expected. We've also added something here called selection criteria. So here's my recipients. And for each recipient, you can see why they received that particular notification. And all of these folks here match that rule. They're on the sales team. And here you can see we have one direct email selection. Very, very helpful to know. At the same time, if you're in a support case, it's also great to know what channels were enabled for that particular uh, notification. Uh, being able to see the status and being able to jump in and see the deliveries for each particular recipient. So you saw in my smart delivery, I had that delay between in-app email and web push, and there you are. In-app's been sent, email is scheduled, web push is scheduled. I have the information I need, uh, testing complete. And then you see, after all this is done, uh, we have been making some updates as well to analytics. So further on down the road, uh, you can come into our revamped analytics. Again, this is just the start. We're just scratching the surface, but we have added notifications per category. So you can start to see how your different categories are performing. Uh, and as I said, this is an area of the application where we definitely see a lot of, uh, of potential to expand. So I'm gonna stop with the end-to-end -end workflow there, but I did wanna leave you with a couple of things as I talk about the dashboard. Very importantly, and I've said it a couple of times now, this is just the start for us. So we, we built this with the, uh, the idea in mind that we're gonna be able to deliver faster for our customers. And even in the last couple of weeks, we've been adding new information. We now have push subscription details for individual users, as well as phone numbers. We're working on introducing events. Uh, so more and more of the data that you need, we are delivering. 
And last but not least, uh, just as like a send off message for myself, uh, for everybody who's on board and has worked with us in the past, I do hope that I, I get to see your faces and, and work on, on this new dashboard with you at some point in time. So if you see me reaching out, uh, I'd love to collaborate. Um, and yeah, thank you very much.